Paula Nuff is passionate about clarity, simplicity, and performance. She is a mother of two beautiful human beings, an artist, former dancer, and credit manager, ice climber, and clown. I love this. She's also the survivor of the darkness of depression and the burnout bubble. All of these experiences are now the fire that Paula carries with her and uses in her speaking, coaching, and teaching. You're going to want to stick around for today's episode because I am having a wonderful conversation with Paula Nuff. The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to Rat Race Reboot. I'm your host, Laura Noel. And as a certified coach and former 27-year military leader, each week I provide bite-sized mindset pivots that will help you reset your mind, reawaken your spirit, and regain your control. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode. I have been looking forward to this conversation for quite some time. Paula and I met through a mutual acquaintance and friend, and it's been months. We've had a wonderful conversation, so I'm looking forward to this one today. Um, Paula, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It is so wonderful to be here. And yes, it's been a few months of conversation back and forth, but here we are. I'm so happy. Oh my gosh, me too. And you are coming all the way from Switzerland to um, to talk with our audience. So I'm really excited. Yes, I am in <laughs> Switzerland, although originally from Finland. So it's like a, there's a, a whole lot of different things in the background. Yeah, yeah. And I want to hear about your background because you have a lot of interesting things. And and a lot of our folks listening today, a lot of people who I talk with, they are wanting to create a, an ideal life for themselves where they are passionate about the work they're doing, the way they're serving, the way they're showing up every day. And they're wondering how they can infuse different elements of experiences that they loved about themselves in and creating something basically new um, from the skill sets they already have. And I'm really interested to hear about your journey. How did you start out and infuse all of these wonderful and different talents? Well, just like with so many, well, almost everyone else, there's so much in the background. And it wasn't like I was born and said, look, I want to become a coach. Uh, that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> I did have that dream like many, many, many years ago. Think like way before, well, I always think back to kids. My older kid is 12 now. So it's more than 12 years ago. That's the timeline. I thought a oh, coach would be something brilliant. Like that's something for me. And then I forgot about that dream. And a lot of other things happened in between, like the kids and then uh, depression and all this. And then as I was getting out of my depression, that's when going way back in my life, like to where I started dancing when I was growing up in Finland and what the dance education, ballet, classical ballet brought into my life. That is the base, pretty much, because I danced very intensely. Mm -hmm. And that was a dream of mine uh, to be a professional ballet dancer. However, my confidence did not, and my body, actually. I'm not the body type of a ballet dancer. And that really has made a big difference in my life. This whole background of not ever feeling like I'm fit or I'm good enough. And so... Like a lot of other people, I followed what I thought was expected of me. So, okay, well, if I can't be dancing here, well, you know, you go and study. Well, I went to study in the States, actually, in the U.S. So that was kind of out of the ordinary, yeah. uh, coming from Finland and never having been in the in the United States before. But I did. And so, but I never gave credit myself. Like, I never thought, oh, that was brave. It was always like, well, you know, I guess lucky, lucky me <laughs> that okay. happened. And so all of these things and then coming to Switzerland from the U.S. And then I'm still here after 22 years and going through a lot of things always. And I think this is something that a lot of people still, uh, yes, 
and very much so live in their everyday life is thinking, what are the others expecting of me? Mm -hmm. And this is the biggest thing for me that was like up until a few years ago, um, the thing, like I did not listen to myself. I did not take myself or my dreams, my desires, my heart in any kind of seriousness kind of thing. So it was very much what I, what is expected? What's the next step that usually is societally is accepted of me doing? So which ended up in burnout and depression uh, in my life. Yeah. So and, this has all that has come together and it hasn't been like a light bulb that now I know, okay, this, this led to this moment. It's been a discovery and it is a discovery until the end of my life. Right. I mean, uh, I will not stop discovering. <laughs> no. And we never, we never stop growing. I mean, once we stop de- growing, we're in kind of in a state of decay, you know, the world around us is changing, but we're not changing. And so being on this journey, it, it is a journey. It's, we're always discovering and learning more things about ourselves. Um, and so one of the things that um, kept emerging in, in you sharing your story and where you came from was this idea of not listening to that inner guidance or trusting that intuition or guidance or really giving yourself credit for the courage that you showed numerous times to take on ballet, to be in that field, to travel across the world and and go to school in the United States. So are these, how did you use sort of some of your coaching to help you navigate and overcome some of these mindset roadblocks that I think affect a lot of us? I know for me personally, I... I had feelings of not enoughness and, um, and I certainly let that hold me back from different positions that I was offered. I would say no, I would decline them because I just didn't see myself in that space. So how did you start to overcome some of these mindset roadblocks that you were experiencing? Well, I have to say that in my life that Depression made such a huge impact. It was seven years. And how I got out of that depression alive was actually for me the very radical decision to leave my marriage, which at the time I didn't think, okay, this is the next step I have to take. It That's the, the time that I know in my life I trusted my intuition. I trusted my heart. This was the thing I had to do, even though we have two kids, even though, you know, a Man, everything that comes together with that decision, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. However, that was the right decision that I also repeatedly go back to and look there. This is my proof. My intuition was right. I got out of that depression within months. And then that point, and I really can pinpoint now this, this occasion is when things shifted for me when I heard the word responsibility like up until a point when I was very depressed and even before that when someone would say look you're responsible for your own life like you know it's it's your responsibility what you do what you say what you think what you feel whatever it's your responsibility and I would be like oh my no please don't like that's guilt and that's uh, shame and that's blaming myself for everything And until a point, and that was um, a a few months after I had left my marriage and I was listening to, and this is really like, I was listening to Tony Robbins, which I didn't even know. Like, I mean, I'm here in Europe and he's a, he's a big time guy, but in Europe, most people don't know who he is. I didn't know who he was. And I was like, well, he was offering this free thing online. I was like, sure, I'm going to, you know, the, I was in Finland visiting my mom and the, no kids around. All right, I'm just going to give it a try. And in that in that program, that word responsibility was brought up. And at that point, I was able to, I was like, I was listening. I was like, holy um, something else. Um, this means I have so many possibilities opportunities that like everything opened up it's like oh man 
If that's my responsibility, like my thoughts, well, then I can pick other thoughts. Mm -hmm. Then I can pick what I think. Like I nobody, and then it real. I realized nobody's ever able, and has never been able to put thoughts into my mind, ever, <laughs> throughout my whole life, over forty years of that point, and that whole thing. Like it's just like a weight lifted, and it's like, oh right, well here we go. If I get to pick, well, let's start picking good ones. <laughs> so I love that. That's pretty much that moment that really opened up, and then you know all the the kind of a snowball uh, started rolling and um, and things took form. And I started working with a coach, which for me, absolutely crucial. That changed my life. And this is the discovery of me becoming a coach and rediscovering that dream I had so many years ago and be like, wow, here I am. <laughs> so, Yeah. That's that was really a moment. Yeah, that's beautiful. I mean, there's so much to to unpack here. I mean, first and foremost is what I've experienced and what I'm hearing in your story and what I've experienced in working with other clients and also doing personal development as a student with other people who are following that path. Um, there's there comes a point where it doesn't make logical sense, but there's this nagging, intuitive kind of do this, take this step, go on, do it. And, you know, it, it, for all of us, it, it's different. For you, that, that moment was when you decided to maybe leave an unhealthy relationship. And it's like what they say, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. It's like you were open that word responsibility kind of opened up for you. And then all of a sudden that Tony Robbins training, which was always there, probably in your Facebook feed somewhere. Anyway, you noticed it and you were open to receiving that information. And I, I think that word responsibility is so powerful and empowering. Um, similarly, in some of the work that I've done with Psy Seminars, that's also a new concept. That was a new concept for me. We talked about the idea of um, victim versus responsible mindset. And it's not to say that things don't happen to us or we're victimized. We're not saying that those things are our fault when we take responsibility. But what we are saying is that we're responsible for... Um, our thoughts and the meaning we make from those experiences that might happen around us or to us. And there's so much power in um, realizing I have control over my thoughts. I have control over my decisions and my life. And I think that is, that is such a beautiful realization um, that opened you up to some amazing... I love that you said you could see the, the possibilities. I, I was like, oh my God, I got goosebumps when you said that. You know, once I realized I'm responsible, it's like you didn't see problems, you saw possibilities. Oh yes, exactly. And that was so beautiful. And this is like the, like where we come to, like the things that I, I like to talk about is simplicity. And that is like simplicity in its essence is like, that's where that's where we are that's our responsibility is within us and it's us alone and even as parents like my kids of course you have responsibilities that are you know to feed them and to you know educate them in a way that you know to look left and right when you cross the street or you know things like that but ultimately i'm also not responsible for my children how they become adults, what choices they make, and that it's them, that's their life. I can be there as a guide, and it's the same as also, like, as a as a coach, I'm, you know, I can guide, and I can listen, and I can ask questions, but my client, they are responsible for the actions that they will take, if they will take, and how they react and respond to that. 
and I am there. I support that and I listen and I ask questions that might be out of the ordinary that hopefully facilitate some sort of transformation or insight or breakthroughs. And I really want to like always put it down into the very simplest, the, the tiniest, simplest things that that really make the difference, which you know, begins with us. Yeah. And I, I like that you're saying you're not telling people what to think or what to do. That's consulting. That's not coaching, right? When we're telling people. And sometimes people will come to us and say, give me the answers. I don't know what to do. But you do know what to do. We all know what to do intuitively. We just have to tune into it. So like you're saying, asking powerful questions that empower them to look within themselves in places and spaces in their mind and their heart that they maybe hadn't explored before. And there's, that's empowering. That's, you're teaching someone to fish, right? (laughs) As opposed to just buying the fish and giving them to them. You're, you're really teaching them to, um, to learn how to draw out from within themselves. And that's powerful. Exactly. Yes. Um, I'm curious because you have a lot of experiences in your life that you bring into your coaching. So tell me a little bit about how you infuse your background of dance. And um, you said in one of your roles, you were well, an ice climber, a clown. Like how do you infuse elements of all those into your coaching? Well, it kind of trickles in because it is a part of me, anything and everything in that there. And there's so much like I've done so much because I was always going along. I I worked for many years to in this company that makes climbing, ice climbing, mountaineering equipment. I've been climbing mountains and rock faces and ice climbing and things like that. Um, Because I was like, you know, asked, do you want to go? Sure, I go. (laughs) So I've done a lot of things. However, you know, like, you know, the clowning project and, and all that. And the dancing is really something that is in my heart. And that was that will always be that way. Uh, but I bring all these experiences, but like, man, ice climbing is really hard. Yeah. And this is, I mean, in one way, it is also resilience to be like, look, I no, don't pay attention to your cold hands. Just keep climbing, um, which, or then pay attention to your hands. If you don't feel them anymore, then you might want to stop um because it might go be going too far like learning limits within yourself learning to listen to your body which i think in any case like whether you uh, normally move or not move your body tells you everything it tells you so many signs and that especially from ballet i'm very in tune with my body um through coordination and through just listening what it's telling me and so this whole co- comes in these all these processes I actually ha- had a chance just a couple of weeks ago to coach someone on performing like being holding a speech on stage which came out of the blue I did not think of myself or advertise although I do call myself a performance coach but I was thinking more in a work setting performance yeah but I was approached by by a lady who was like, I think you'd be really good in coaching me this. I was like, sure, let's take it on. <laughs> and we went through this whole actual performance coaching, like how to be on stage, warming up your facial muscles. And in that sense, my whole background as being growing up on stage, doing the clowning project, which was a solo 30-minute piece. Oh, that was a, a really tough project, but I did it. And um, that has taught me so much of mi- just mimicking and showing things with your body without necessarily speaking, mm-hmm. but also using voice. I mean, that just all brings it all together. And that's, mm. it's coming, yeah. trickling in. Like I, I see it kind of like a, my history is not a line it's not a timeline. There isn't in my mind. There isn't a line. It's it's a whole cloud of different experiences. And then at some point, in some points of my my coaching, even during conversations, things just pop out. And like, oh yeah, that climbing trip that I did. I lived in Salt Lake City, so I went climbing in in uh, Utah a lot, or skiing somewhere, or 
um, just being a parent uh, or a dog owner, that too. So mm-hmm. there have been benefits from that too in my in my coaching. So it just kind of from that cloud of experience, things pop up. Yeah, and they are, and I keep telling also everyone: look, never forget. You never forget anything. Actually, yeah. it's all here in our brain. Mm-hmm. It's all there. And then, yeah, the, the if you allow, if you are in a relaxed, allowing, mm-hmm. and receiving mode, you are able to, even in a conversation, be in a state where you can receive that information that's helpful in that place. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, you touched on a a few things here it's like one you said your path wasn't linear it was kind of a a bunch of different things and so I want to encourage people you know sometimes you'll have the inclination you follow that curiosity and you um, you know you nurture that curiosity by following it and it might not make logical sense like I'm doing this for this purpose it might just be for the enjoyment of it but you know And maybe you're like, why did I do that? It's not serving a purpose. But when you look back later, you see, wow, I see how this fits in now. So I always tell people to follow their curiosity. And um, it doesn't have to make logical sense. You know, there's more to it than meets the eye. Um, Absolutely. And then the other piece that you had mentioned was aspects of your work and getting in tune with your body. There's so much, whether you're ice climbing or you're dancing or you're just uh, problem solving, solution finding, you can feel in your body, um, you know, that intuitive guidance or when something doesn't feel right to you. So I think that's such a powerful tool uh, to be able to teach people to just get get in their body and be present uh, to kind of have a deeper understanding of, of what they might be feeling or experiencing because that's a telltale sign of what you are thinking or what you're dwelling on. Uh, I think that's exactly. really powerful. Um, so I'm, I, I want to know also, how can people work with you or get in touch with you? How do you serve clients? Because I don't want to, I'm going to put your contact information in the show notes. I have your webpage there. So all of our listeners can find you. But what's the best way to get in touch with you? What might that look like um, if they want to work with you and have that conversation? Yeah, great. Thank you for asking that. I post, I got a social media linked in. That's where I post like regularly. And I do a lot of content that just like I use call simple tips or anything to do with simplicity, clarity, things that I do. And I share also experiences that I've had. So I do post that is the best way to really get read content and also get in touch with me. You can DM me anytime and I mean, I love connecting with people. I love hearing people's stories and and finding out, is there a way that I can help someone figure things out or find some clarity, like or find some way to to put more tools in their own toolbox for living a cl- clear, simple, joyful life anywhere and everywhere with whoever they are wherever they are and I love doing that through just talking having conversations so I work on -on one-on-one I also do group coachings I'm probably going to do one in the fall that will also be posted on the website and on LinkedIn and I speak also I do speaking to companies to groups of people about the same thing clarity and simplicity and getting out of that like stress mode like it's yeah. everything is uh, so much in our heads and how do you just do little simple things that can help you on a daily basis to get out of that and if you're a leader business owner how can you use your own clarity your own toolbox to help people you lead or the people who are in your company and to be like an example, that's also why I love working with leaders. It's they, this whole trickling effect or ripple effect, I guess it's called, mm-hmm. that com- comes automatically and naturally. Ah, and what you're doing is, is so needed, um, especially these days. Um, and so 
if you're listening out there, if you want to get in contact with Paula, I highly recommend you do. If not on your behalf for your organization, get on her webpage, find her on LinkedIn. And um, Paula, I want to thank you so much for being with us today and pouring into uh, the Rat Race Reboot audience. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was such a pleasure. <laughs> Likewise. Um, and for the rest of you, I want to hear your comments. If you love today's episode, which I know you will, leave us a five-star review, leave a comment, and also go to my book webpage. My book is launching now. It is finished. It is complete. Go to lauranoelcc.com backslash rat race reboot. We'll have that in the show notes. You will get a free chapter right now before everyone else can get their hands on the book. You can get a head start. And um, we also have a free Facebook community with some tips. And I'm also going to be hosting a, a free book club where we're going to go through each of those chapters. I'm going to coach you through them. So the book is a resource you use, not something you just throw on the shelf. So thank you again for joining us. And remember, everything is created twice, first in your imagination and then in physical form. We'll see you next week. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.